Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics podcast. As always, I am your host, Fern Banatine. As always, you can reach me on Twitter at at FBanaty, that's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y, or at BuffFanaticsPod. Hope everybody had a good little holiday, hope everyone's enjoying the summer. Of course, all still remains fairly quiet on the NFL front, so without much news to report, I thought we'd have uh, another one of these fun little episodes, particularly where we try to predict what's going to happen in the 2019 season. So this week, we're going to examine some prop bets. Uh, some over-under bets on Buffalo Bills players uh, on specific achievements for the 2019 season. For those of you that follow the Buffalo Fanatics podcast Twitter account, a couple of weeks ago, we put out a tweet with a few of these over-under prop bets for the fans to offer their opinions on, uh, one involving Josh Allen, LaShawn McCoy, Jerry Hughes, Robert Foster, uh, and also the over-under for the Buffalo Bills win totals on the 2019 season. So I'm going to go through uh, each and every one of these over under odds and I'm going to give you uh, my prediction. Uh, try to be as objective as possible and uh, try to substantiate, uh, try to pro- provide a little bit of analysis on uh, why I think the player will either achieve the mark or not achieve the mark. And I'm not really going to take injury into consideration when uh, making my picks uh, other than to say if a, a player has been fairly injury prone. Uh, I think only really LaShawn McCoy on this list. Uh, he was pretty banged up last year and of course as a running back he's getting up there in age so uh, injury will be a little bit of a consideration for him uh, but for most of these other prop bets I'm not really strongly considering the, the chance of injury. So we'll start as we very often do uh, with a Josh Allen prop bet. We like starting with Josh Allen, the most important player on the team going into the, his second season. So the prop bet is uh, whether Josh Allen is going to achieve 25 total touchdowns in his second season. That's rushing and passing touchdowns combined. Now, uh, with most of these prop bets, I found that they were extremely close. Uh, of course, that's why they were made the way they were. Oh, a little caveat, uh, most of these lines are, weren't directly from odds makers in Vegas. Some of them I made up, others uh, were pulled from other sources on Twitter and a few other places that I just kind of saw floating around, uh, including this one. But suffice to say, I I don't find, of all the prop bets, I find this one is the least close. I'm going to take a strong over on this one that uh, Alan has a chance to actually shatter that 25 touchdown mark. Uh, All you have to do is look back to his rookie season uh, when he totaled 18 total touchdowns, 10 throwing touchdowns, and 8 rushing touchdowns. And he wasn't even a full starter. In fact, he only started 11 games in that season. Of course, came in uh, the second half of the first game of the season. So he played in 12 games total. And that first game in the game that he was injured uh, versus the Houston Texans, he didn't even play the whole game. So even if you were to put together a 16-game projection for for what he did in 12 games uh, during his rookie year, you would end up with 24 total touchdowns on the season projection. Uh, there's quite a bit of evidence out there that demonstrates that second-year quarterbacks tend to take a pretty big statistical jump in their second season as opposed to their first. Starting with the best, you look at Tom Brady, who uh, jumped from 18 to 28 touchdowns from his first to second year. Another great example is Carson Wentz a few years back, who went from 18 total touchdowns in his rookie year to 33 in his second year in a season he didn't even manage to finish. Matthew Stafford's another great example. He jumped from 15 touchdowns to 41 after uh, missing a year due to injury in between those two seasons. Jared Goff, Derek Carr, Blake Borles are just a few other quarterbacks who, for whatever reason, put up significantly better uh, numbers in their second season as starters as opposed to their first. Now with Allen, you have a significantly improved offensive line. Of course, the Bills really addressed that in the offseason, signing Six offensive linemen in free agency, of course, drafting Cody Ford in the second round of the draft. As far as receivers go, we signed John Brown, Cole Beasley, uh, tight end Tyler Croft, and we drafted Dawson Knox. So there's quite clearly an influx of talent on the offensive side of the ball. A uh, lot more talent than there was last year when Josh Allen was kind of forced into action. On that note, that should be taken into consideration as well. 
He didn't really have the necessary time to prepare before he was thrust into the starting job. He did show improvement all throughout the season. We have every reason to believe that he's going to keep showing improvement. So this first prop bet is a fairly easy one to me, and I'm taking the over on Josh Allen with 25 total touchdowns on the season in year two. Somewhat related to this, I came across a pretty interesting breakdown uh, that looked at quarterbacks' uh, wins from their first year to their second. Uh, this was posted on the Stadium Wall Forum on, at the Two Bills Drive website. And we see a lot of uh, recent second-year quarterbacks who made big jumps in win totals in their second years. Uh, starting with Jared Goff, he went from 4 wins to 11 wins in his second year as a starter. Mitch Trubisky of the Bears went from 5 wins to 12 wins. Uh, Deshaun Watson went from 4 wins to 11 wins, even though he only started 6 games in his rookie season. The aforementioned Carson Wentz went from 7 wins to 13 wins. Uh, Marcus Mariota is another player who went from 3 wins to 9 wins. Derek Carr, 3 wins to 7 wins. Jameis Winston, 6 wins to 9 wins. So uh, ultimately, if this is another indicator of the jump that Josh Allen can take insofar as wins and losses goes, it's yet another reason for us as Bills fans to be very optimistic about this upcoming season. All right, the second uh, prop bet is about LaShawn McCoy, and uh, the over-under is 800 rushing yards. Uh, now, this is one that I struggled with a little bit. I think it's going to be very close. Uh, first and foremost, I do believe that LaShawn McCoy is going to bounce back. He's a great candidate to bounce back this year. I'm hoping he's going to be a little healthier this year uh, compared to last year. Of course, we mentioned the offensive line should be significantly improved. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have to consider that McCoy is a bit of an injury risk just because he is getting up there in age. He's rarely managed to play all 16 games in a season in his tenure with the Buffalo Bills, and that's to be expected for a running back position, especially a workhorse-type running back. So I'm going to go with the under for this one. I'm going to go under 800 yards. I'm taking into account uh, at least partially the, the injury risk, but also I think uh, the addition of Frank Gore uh, was really intended to be somebody who can alleviate the pressure a little bit on McCoy. I don't think he's going to be expected to be the workhorse he was earlier in his career with the Bills and with the Eagles. However, I do expect this to be extremely close. In fact, if I had to do a projection of LaShawn McCoy, I might be right around that 800 mark. My projection would look something like 180 carries on the season, averaging about 4.4 yards a carry which would leave him right around 800 total rushing yards. Uh, now, I mentioned Frank Gore, who should steal some carries away from McCoy. We also, have, of course, have rookie running back Devin Singletary, uh, TJ Eldon's in competition to make the team. So it looks like the Bills are going to probably use a bit more of a co committee approach at running back, uh, keep all those older legs fresh. And all these guys stealing carries from McCoy is going to uh, limit his production just a little bit this season. Although, uh, like I mentioned, I still... I do think McCoy is going to have a bit of a bounce back year this season and he's going to look more like his old self than what we saw for the most part during last season. All right, uh, next man up, next prop bet. We have a Jerry Hughes prop bet and the over under is 9.5 sacks on the season. Now, this is another one that's uh, pretty close for me. As most of you may have figured out by now, I'm a huge Jerry Hughes fan. I think he's one of the more most valuable players on this team, uh, given his pass rushing prowess, his run stopping ability. He's a bit of a leader out there, uh, but he hasn't had the best sack production over the last few years. It's been pretty well documented that he's not the best finisher. Uh, he seems to get to the quarterback, but he ha has trouble kind of wrapping that quarterback up. He sometimes over pursues, misses tackles. Uh, some of that might be attributed to the fact that. There wasn't really another pass rush threat, either from the interior of the defensive line or the other end position, uh, which allowed the quarterback to, uh, some room to kind of escape his grasp when there wasn't another player coming at them from a different angle. I think we all hope that Ed Oliver can uh, fix this problem by providing a, a stable and steady pass rush from the interior. Of course, there's also the opportunity for Trent Murphy to bounce back and regain some of his uh, early career form. Regardless, though, uh, Hughes has not been putting up big sack numbers the last few years. Last year he only had seven sacks even though if you watch him play uh, you can tell that he probably should have had more sacks on the season but for whatever reason he wasn't able to finish. In the three years before last season he was only averaging six sacks per season so ultimately in the last four years he's only averaging really just over six sacks per year. Uh, so to get all the way from six or so sacks up to nine and a half or over nine and a half so ten sacks would be a pretty big jump 
So I am going to take the under on this one. Again, though, like I mentioned, it's extremely close for me. And I can easily see him having a right around the, the nine sack mark. I think what ultimately tipped the scales for me is that he will be 31 years old going into the season. And it's an age where there is a little bit of a regression that is expected for a defensive lineman. It's certainly not always the case. You look at guys like Cameron Wake, Terrell Suggs, who are still operating at a very high level in their mid to late 30s. But we at least have to give some consideration to the fact that he is aging a little bit. So he might be in a unique position where he actually puts up better statistics or better sack marks on the year, even though his play declines just a little bit. Um, I think he'll just put up those better sack marks with more support around him. And maybe just by, by sheer luck, because this last season, even the last two seasons, uh, there were so many chances where he was just so close to a sack, only to have the quarterback kind of pull away at the last second or elude his grasp, unfortunately. So it's another under for me here. But again, uh, if I had to go out on a limb and make a projection here, uh, I'd put him right around uh, the nine sack mark on the 2019 season. So the next prop bet on the list, and this one gets me really excited uh, just thinking about it, it's Robert Foster. Uh, the over-under is whether he'll achieve 1,000 receiving yards in the 2019 season. Now in 2018, Foster finished with 541 total receiving yards. However, he only really cracked the starting lineup the last seven weeks of the season, and most of those receiving yards were over those seven weeks. All but 30 yards were, so he had 511 uh, receiving yards in those last seven weeks of the season if you average that out over the course of a full season you get 1168 total receiving yards uh, we see a player that clearly got better uh, as the season progressed he developed a really nice rapport with josh allen uh, so like josh allen all signs are pointing towards a continued continued development for robert foster and this prop bet i'm pretty comfortable with my prediction here I think Robert Foster is going to exceed 1,000 receiving yards on the season. I think over 16 games with Josh Allen throwing him the ball, he has a chance to have to really continue to take a next step and a chance to develop into one of the more exciting young receivers in the NFL. Now, we do have to consider the impacts of the Bills bringing in John Brown, who uh, serves a similar function to Robert Foster. We also brought in Cole Beasley, who should take some targets away from Foster. Uh, but I think Brown, uh, provided that he stays healthy, uh, is actually only going to help Robert Foster. I think cornerbacks are going to have to account for both Brown and Foster's speed, and uh, it's going to be really troublesome for them. If both of those receivers are on the field, it's going to be hard to te for teams to kind of assign their top shutdown corner to one of those receivers because the other one will just beat you. It's also going to be tough for defensive coordinators to assign the proper uh, defensive formations to cover those fly routes or those poster corner routes. Gosh, that's really exciting to think about uh, having both those two receivers on the field at the same time next year. All that speed uh, with Josh Allen's cannon of an arm uh, really gets me excited for the upcoming season. I really hope that uh, John Brown can find a way to stay healthy. And this could be nothing if not extremely fun to watch uh, Allen chucking it down the field to those two guys. Uh, so I'm going to take a pretty solid over on Robert Foster achieving 1,000 receiving yards next season. And that leads me to the next prop bet. And this one was uh, actually a question that I received after posting the uh, Robert Foster over under. And somebody wrote me, uh, hey, Fern, you're talking a lot about Robert Foster. What about Zay Jones and what's his prognosis for next season? Uh, he's another receiver that really uh, picked up his play from his rookie year to his second year. He led the Bills with 652 receiving yards last year. He scored seven touchdowns. Uh, so why all this talk about Robert Foster and why no talk about Zay Jones? Uh, so let's do the same thing for Zay Jones. Let's give him an over-under of 1,000 receiving yards. Now, of course, naturally, since I believe Robert Foster is going to achieve 1,000 receiving yards, uh, that, that cuts into the projected production of the other receivers on the team. Uh, like I mentioned, we added John Brown, Cole Beasley, Tyler Croft. So we have a, we have a lot of mills to feed. Uh, and with Robert Foster getting 1,000 receiving yards, I'm going to go uh, with the under here on Zay Jones. And that's not to say that I don't think he can still continue to develop. I actually see him uh, as being w one of our top red zone threats. We don't really have any other kind of big bodied physical receivers on the roster. Not that Jones is overly physical, but he is a guy that seemed to be targeted in the end zone last year, scoring seven touchdowns. So I think he's going to continue to be that type of receiver. I see him scoring uh, seven or more touchdowns again. 
Uh, he should have a decent amount of receiving yards, but it looked to me that uh, late last year, Foster was a guy getting a lot of big chunks and big receiving yards where Zay Jones is developing more into a bit of a possession receiver. I think his best fit is still in the slot as a slot receiver, but obviously with bringing over Cole Beasley from Dallas, who's one of the more consistent slot receivers in the league, so I, I don't think that's going to be Zay Jones' main, main role in 2019. Uh, but I do see a, a good chance that Zay Jones, or maybe even Cole Beasley, is actually the actual team leader in receptions. I think Foster will be more of that big play guy like he was late, late in the season. Foster averaged a ridiculous 20 yards per reception. Uh, so I, I still see a pretty solid role for Zay Jones. I still think that he's going to continue to get better. I just don't know if he's going to be uh, the big yardage guy, especially uh, if I'm predicting that Foster does get 1,000 yards. So I'm going to take the under on Zay Jones getting up to 1,000 yards on the 2019 season. All right, the last prop bet that I wanted to discuss, and this one comes straight from the Vegas odds makers. It's the Bills over under and wins on the season. So currently the odds makers have the Bills at squarely at 7 uh, wins on the 2019 season, uh, with 7 being a push. Uh, when we tweeted this out, uh, we gave fans the option of a 7.5 just because I don't think many fans are going to be picking uh, less than 7 wins for the Bills this upcoming season. And quite honestly, I don't think that we should. I think this is another uh, fairly straightforward, easy pick for me. I'm de- going to definitely go over uh, on the 7 wins. I'm fairly surprised that this line hasn't moved up even a little bit more. Uh, just given all of the free agent acquisitions we've made, Uh, Given what we've talked about, uh, Josh Allen should continue to develop as a quarterback. He's got a better offensive line. He's got better weapons. On the defense, our defensive line has a chance to be improved. We have a few young linebackers who should continue to develop. Uh, We've added some depth in the secondary with adding a few cornerbacks. Uh, Last year, our number two cornerback position was a bit of a hot potato with uh, going through Vontae Davis and Ryan Lewis, uh, a few other bodies in there before Levi Wallace uh, started to show that he can be that second cornerback. Uh, we brought in EJ Gaines, of course, Kevin Johnson, uh, who both have some good starting experience in this league. Uh, we have some pretty solid stability in the coach and front office. Everybody seems to be on board. Uh, the players currently on the team seem to have bought into Sean McDermott's uh, culture-type philosophy. Uh, we managed to go 3-3 three and three over our last six games as the season last year, showing some improvement once, once Josh Allen started to get comfortable in there. Uh, and Within the division, of course, New England's always going to be tough, but uh, the Jets and especially the Dolphins don't seem to be much of a threat this year. I can easily, easily see us going about 3-1 and one in those four games. So really, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the over here in the 7. I, I think the better question would be whether the Bills are a playoff team uh, this upcoming season, which would likely require us um, getting up to 10 wins on the season. Uh, that's where the question really starts for me, uh, is whether everything kind of comes together, whether Josh Allen develops quickly enough, all the new players start to gel soon enough so that we can get to 10 wins. I'll just leave it at saying uh, over the last few weeks have we taken a, as we've taken a look at uh, the Bills' prognosis for the upcoming season and a few podcasts, I think I'm be beginning a, to see my, I know my own narrative start to develop, and I, I do believe that the Bills have improved enough that uh, we definitely are contenders to get to that 10 wins. I'm not going to make any bold predictions just now, but I will say that the, the better question here would have been, uh, are the Bills going to make the playoffs rather than an over-under of seven wins on the season? So uh, if you're a betting man or woman, I would definitely kind of run to the sports books and make that bet. I think that's one of the... Uh, better values out there in terms of sports bets going on right now. So if you want to make some easy money, uh, go bet on the Bills to win over seven games in this upcoming season. All right, that's going to wrap up to this week's podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. As always, I'm sure uh, this is one of those topics that might generate some good, healthy discussion. Uh, you can hit me up on YouTube, on Twitter, of course. Uh, let me know what you think of the Uh, My prognosis for the Bills over or under on the season. I just can't wait for the 2019 season to begin. Hope you guys all have a good week. And I'll be back with another show next week. So, go Buffalo Bills!